All right, guys, so today we're doing a video on the M96 here from the red Porsche. Um, there's one video I think we should do while we're here, while we're apart, and while we're right in front of the camera, and that is one on oil pressure. These engines are notorious for having low oil pressure after they're warmed up at idle. The yellow car we did had the same problem. Everybody else has the same problem. I'm gonna show you how to fix that today by doing these few easy steps. As the same as BMW, Audi, anything, we always use man filters. There's a reason why we use these. These are about six to $10 a piece, depends on where you buy them. You could buy them off Amazon, but these filters are a lot more rigid. And the number one cause of low oil pressure on any German car is the filter will not be rigid enough and it'll actually twist. I'm not gonna twist a brand new filter, but it'll twist so when you take it out, it's all twisted and the ribs are actually pinched shut. A man filter will not do that, uh, but a lot of other filters will do that. And for you BMW guys, remember that blue E90 I had, it had that problem. We cannot, I sold that car, the guy never drove it, got it changed to a quick lube place, got it back or I bought it back from him and could not figure out what in the hell is going on with this thing. This Vandals codes, all these weird issues, kind of find out the filter was crushed cutting off oil supply. Got lucky to not blow that engine up, it very well could have, uh, but this is the same way. That's the very first line of defense you take, make sure the filter is appropriate in it. And then let's go ahead and pull this front cover off. We're gonna show you all the workings of the oil pump. We're gonna go ahead and take this piece off right here. 15 mil, and there is what, nine, 10 mils here. So let's go ahead and do that. There's a bolt bin up there on top. These should be all the same size. They're not all the same size, okay. You can't mix these up though. When they're long, I mean, if you put the wrong one in the wrong hole, Obviously, that's not going to fit, right? If you put a short one in the long hole, it's not going to tighten up. Nope, that with that. All right, let me get our power ratchet. Another long bolt. So two long ones, all the rest are all the same size. And then, can we get this off of here? Nope. We gotta pry it off there. We'll double, triple check, everything's out, everything is out. All right. Get a little pry spot here. There we are. And I think we actually have to take this. No, maybe not. <laughs> Nasty, day, huh? So this is the oil pump and I'm gonna make sure, first of all, are your gears okay in here? All the gears are okay. We're gonna pull this out. I probably need to get a rag. This is super, super nasty. We're gonna get a rag or wipe some stuff off of here. We're gonna look at this and make sure nothing's rubbing the case. We're gonna check our hex key. And the very end, we're gonna check our spring. First things first, here's the hex key. Let's go ahead and pull this out. Let's see if it's broken or if it has any issues. This one is not broken. So let's go ahead and wipe it off. And you can see it doesn't really have any wear. Uh, you could actually do this in the car. You have to take the back bumper off the car and the inner crash bar. You could actually do this right from the back with very little effort. Um, so if you guys are having a little pressure, check this. The key is good. There's not a lot of wear on it at all. It's not bad enough to do anything with it. Let's put that back in there like so. Let's go ahead and pull off this next gear. Pour some of the oil out of it. Pour some of the gravy out. And what we're gonna do here is take our rag. We're gonna wipe out in here. And a lot of guys are reporting there's, they have wear on this part in here and they're having wear on the face of that. But this car does not have any of that. And I didn't notice any oil pressure light coming on. However, we didn't let it wrong. The only time we drove this car was just to get it off the trailer. Or no, we didn't put it on the trailer. We drove it from the transport down my driveway and into the shop and that's it. So it's not like it warmed up or even got off the cold mark. So let's go ahead and put this back in here like so. Let's go ahead and put our main gear back in. Let's actually attach the pump. So that's that. Now let me get the spring uh, tensioner out of the pump or out of this other side of this casing. 
I'll be able to tell. So we need a 15 mil, actually a 17. Let's go ahead and take that off of here. Now, the Caymans and everything all have this spring. And this spring actually looks pretty good. It's like straight water in there. Actually looks pretty decent. I actually have a Cayman spring here. Let me go see if it's exactly the same. I have a brand new one. Maybe we should just change this out while we're right here. And there is a crush washer on there. All right, so we actually have a spring for the Cayman here. And I'm almost certain this is the same spring. We're gonna find out right now. And this one is brand new. And these springs will actually get worn out and this will cause a drop in oil pressure, which can lead to bore scoring and all kinds of nasty stuff, right? That you don't want going on. So there's Cayman spring. Yep, it's the same exact, exactly the same spring. Let's just go ahead and change it. We got it right here. They're not expensive. We'll go ahead and slide that bad boy in there. And we need to get a new crush washer from our crush washer bin and do it that way. There we go. So we'll put that on there. Then we'll finger this back on here because we need to replace this oil ring. This oil ring is fairly flat. It's not too bad, but we have a whole gasket coming. So we might as well just do it all, right? We might as well just do it all uh, because an oil ring that old cannot be good. Reinstall this. It's a little bit thicker. It has a little more bite to it, but it's the same inside diameter on the ring. And then we'll torque this down. We'll find the torque specs. We'll bump it with this. But we have to take all this back apart anyway, like I said, to do the ring. So let's go ahead and just temporarily reinstall this bad boy. Like show. And we'll finger the bolts in it and we should be good to go. So there it is, that's your little oil issues. Obviously, if you never change your oil, or obviously if it's all full of coolant, it's not gonna help the situation at all either. But that's the most major ones. Um, obviously, if you had bad rod bearings or bad main bearings, you're gonna have low oil pressure also. That's not really a big deal on these cars. That's not a common failure point. Um, however, one thing I wanna talk about real quick too, if you have the coolant and the oil and the oil and the coolant, and you just simply never check anything on your car and you run it long enough with that mix in it, it will ruin the bearings. But this engine, when we took the cams and everything on, everything was perfect. This doesn't have any miles on it all with that in there. It still is lubricating to some degree, but what we will do, we will go ahead and uh, probably remove the oil cooler again, this engine and clean it out with some brake parts cleaner. Uh, we will spray all that oil pump out and any other oil lines to get my hands on anything at all that I can do to get all that sludge out of the engine itself. If we change oil again, it actually will steam whatever little bits in there left, we'll steam it out again. Uh, probably what we'll do though, before we send this car back to the owner, we'll probably change oil again uh, after we fill it with this time with a new filter, just to make sure it's all out. The coolant, there's not a ton of oil in the coolant in this car. So hopefully we can flush it several times, simple green and get that pretty much wrangled in. Now we got everything apart and I can look in the coolant lines going up to the radiators. I don't see anything on the coolant lines. So we'll just, basically we're flushing residuals out of there. And that's it guys. But thanks for watching today's video. Hope you liked it. And this is how to fix your low oil pressure issue on your Porsche 996 or 997, 987, 986 and all the above. Thanks for watching guys. Have a good day.